Mimi and Brownie met in 1943 when they were army nurses in World War II. They were roommates at the first station in the South Pacific and they quickly became inseparable. They stuck together through their time in the army, treating soldiers and working in 120 degree tropical heat. But even though they were in the middle of a war, they were single and in their 20s, so they managed to have some fun too. Mimi and Brownie have been best friends for 74 years and they talk on the phone every day. Hello. How are you, dearie? You're difficult to hear. You're on a different phone now, aren't you? Either the phone's bad or you've got dirty ears. <laughs> Don't tell me any dirty jokes. Everybody's listening around here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got you. You know those stories you and your friends tell over and over again that somehow never get old? Mimi and Brownie have a lifetime of those. There was the army leave that was meant to be 15 days, but turned into a 50-day hitchhiking adventure. Remember when we hitchhiked from New Guinea to Australia? And we got uh, underwear for the cold? And they didn't have anything but men's underwear. My side still hurts from laughing at that. <laughs> and we were so afraid they'd see our long underwear because we were looking for dates. Of course. <laughs> There was the chaos of trying to run a hospital inside of a tent. And then the rains came. Yeah, with the... Remember that? And the bedpans floated away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> and there were all the ways they tried to pass the time on their days off. Remember we get rationed the wine? I remember one time, I think we had gin, and we went in to see uh, the Hallelujah Chorus. The booze was sitting right next to us in the church. <laughs> After the war ended, Mimi and Brownie came back to the States, but their lives took them in different directions. Mimi stayed in New York, where she had a job at the hospital, and Brownie got married and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. But something kept them connected, and the calls kept coming. Over the years, they sent funny cards to one another, went on vacations together, and talked on the phone a few times a month. There were birthdays, anniversaries, second marriages, and time passed the way it tends to. But then, after their husbands died, something shifted. All of a sudden, it was just the two of them again, just like it had been the day they met. So, even though they were on opposite sides of the country, they started checking in every evening Mimi on her couch, Brownie in her favorite chair. Today, I have had better days. Today's not my day. My knee is <laughs> starting to give on me again. Yeah. No, but we're doing okay. Did they aspirate that? Uh, what's that? Did they aspirate your knee? At they any asked time? Me. Aspirated, As asshole. Aspirate my knee? Oh, God, yes. They took 90 cc's out. Is it right, is it right knee or left knee? The right leg. Oh, of course. <laughs> I read about Mimi when the New York Times profiled her on her 100th birthday. The article mentioned her friendship with Brownie, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. When I reached out to them, Mimi and Brownie told me they hadn't actually seen each other in about 15 years. And yet every day, sometimes twice a day, there they were, catching up on the phone. But once I started listening to their conversations, I realized they were each other's only lifeline to a forgotten world, a world that no one else understands. Gosh, do you realize that's over 70 years ago? It's more, it's 73. Well, 1941, wasn't it? No, it was 43. 42? 43. 43. Isn't it strange though, the way the two of us have kept up? I just feel so lucky. Yeah, I do too. Really, we had such fun together. <laughs> we could laugh at the same thing so damn hard, too. <laughs> still laughing, baby. Yeah, we still are. Probably going up the ladder to heaven or to hell, wherever we're going. We'll uh -huh. still be laughing. That's right, we will. Listening to Mimi and Brownie talk made me think of two of my own childhood friends that I've known since we were seven. We didn't go to war together, but we have our own old stories that keep us connected. Like reenacting episodes of our favorite talk shows, Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake, 
or the time we stole Pepsis from the neighbor's garage, drank them, and buried the evidence under wood chips in the backyard. There's something ritualistic about sharing the same stories over and over again. It's kind of like having your own language. As I get older, the person I used to be is less and less familiar. But sometimes, talking to my old friends, I remember who I once was through their eyes. They're the few people in my life who know my whole self. I wonder if we'll still be friends at 100. Oh, Brownie, we're living too long. Uh, you can say that again, sweetheart. I'm yeah. beginning to really lose it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you can't expect to get better at 100. No, <laughs> we're not ready, evidently. Or whoever's taking us isn't ready. Yeah. Mimi and Brownie weren't scared to talk about death. They talked about everything else. Why would death be an exception? But even though they talked about it, nothing really prepares you for losing your best friend. And then one day, the phone didn't ring like it usually did. In December of 2016, Brownie died. Mimi still lives in her apartment on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. She's 104 now. I visited her to see how she's holding up since Brownie passed away. Well, I think of her very often and I find myself occasionally talking to her. And, uh, you know, I, I've accepted that she's gone, but I also accept the fact that I know I'm going to see her again. I know it. So. That's been my feeling. I do miss her now and then, I sure do. Say well, like our damn V. <laughs> Mimi still has visitors every now and then, and she talks to her friends and family on the phone often. But of course, it's not the same. Okay, sweetheart, love ya. Okay, have a goodie. Yeah, you too, sweetheart. We'll be talking, of course.